All right, generic route. Nothing to see here except awesome music. Uh, and I'm going to get Starsky a proper hold item via buying coins. going to get a silk scarf, which boosts normal moves. But that's it. I'm going to head out and let you listen to the music. See ya. Hey folks, Datai from the future here. Uh, we are heading off on the second to last proper route of the game, uh, ignoring the post game because I never do the post game uh, in in this playthrough. Uh, we are heading to Route 222, which is just east of the the resort, the five star resort, resort or whatever they call it, and it is blocked by a fat man uh, up until you beat Mount Coronet. And I understand sort of why they did that. Uh, I feel like they could have come up with a less obtrusive uh, way of doing it, like uh, having a Metroid tactic of requiring, say, rock climb, and then you could go here, but you wouldn't really accomplish anything um, up until you beat the plot part of the game. But uh, basically, they save it for last because it's a very chill, very relaxing route. It's just a stroll on the beach, fighting uh, some fishermen and various other assorted trainers that won't pose much of a challenge. And uh, it's a cool down after kind of the huge climax of the game up on Mort Mount Coronet. So... You know, stroll on the beach, I'm not entirely opposed to that. I still need to find things to nitpick about it, because that's what I've been doing in these post-commentaries. Um, my nitpick would be that, again, it doesn't really make use of its location. It is a beach, it does have uh, relaxing music as a cooldown, uh, but it doesn't do anything with the fact that it's a beach. It could very easily just be a boardwalk or a, a pond. Or, or something of that sort, because fishermen are just all over the place. Kind of what I liked in, uh... I feel like they could have mixed two ideas from Ruby and Sapphire in here, uh, in that, like, you would have a, a beach kind of resort thing, uh, much like the route south of Slateport. So you'd have some kids playing around, and there are, is, like, a tuber here, a tuber kid, um... And then you could also mix the idea of items hidden in, like, piles of ashes that was kind of near Fall Arbor Town uh, in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald, uh, except replace it for sand in this case, clearly. I just... I'm, I'm finding things to nitpick about. I'm perfectly okay with this route. It, it doesn't stand out in any way whatsoever. There's nothing memorable about it. Uh, you don't even have to get into the water to get a special item or a secret item or any item whatsoever. It's just, uh, it's it's there, it's unremarkable, it doesn't do anything particularly nasty. Uh, you saw those two buildings there. Those two buildings are, I guess, the, the focal points, the most important, most interesting parts of the route. They're not very interesting. Uh, one is the a, a fisherman who will ask you to catch him a, a certain fish Pokemon, and he will uh, judge it based on its size and probably give you a prize uh, based on how big it is. I think size is random, so you may have to catch a bunch. And then the other, actually, is a Pikachu fan club with a trainer hidden uh, in, in the Pikachu masses, dressed as a Pikachu, and I just did not know to, that it was there. And if I remember correctly, I never actually go back and fight that trainer uh, in the playthrough because it was too late. I had, like I was up at the Elite Four, and it's like screw that. Or maybe I even found out completely afterwards. And that was the final straw in dropping the fight all trainers condition that I had imposed on myself. Uh, so I, I basically never did it for any other future playthroughs. Anyway, this is Flint. He's an Elite Four member. Um, I'm, I'm Tom. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll find out about the whole plot of this city later. Uh, but this is Sunny Shore City, home of the 8th Gym, and I will see you guys next time.